Hello internet friends, it's Paul here. I'm back at Featherstone Driving Test Centre uh, to show you a couple of new driving test routes this morning. So what's interesting about this route, um, it was tricky because it was early in the morning. This is an early in the morning test at about eight o'clock in the morning. Um, so try this out at eight o'clock in the morning when you're doing your own private practice and you'll find that the route feels very different from other times of the day um, because of the school traffic. Unfortunately, today, this morning, it's nine o'clock. I, I did uh, find myself um, getting here late this morning, but I'm gonna show you the route and um, I'm going to try and remember to, sh to share with you um, all the uh, the road names that go with this route, okay? So bringing the car forward now onto the National Speed Limit Road and we'll be turning left and we're going to go immediately left onto Greenfields Lane in a moment. Oh, actually, it's a right turn. So bringing the car forward, having a good check there. Yep, bringing the car up to speed as fast as you can. Try and demonstrate that you know what you're doing. It is national speed limit. You can get up to at least 50 miles an hour along here before we have to worry about slowing down. Um, so there's a bend coming up mirror. I don't know what's waiting for me behind that bend. So my mirror check's already done. Covering the clutch and brake right now. And there's my 30 zone. So mirror slowing the car down. I'm gonna be doing that right turn in a moment. I'm, doing 30 as I reach 30. I'm going into that zone, holding back slightly for the car that's emerged there. And then round the bend into high fields or green fields, green fields lane. Uh, I'm gonna be pulling over on the left, mindful not to pull over next to the bus stop. So mirror checks, the signal can go on and you can pull over anywhere you like along here. I try not to sneeze this morning and brake neutral signal off. The examiner will say drive away when you're ready. Uh, there is a car behind me, so I'm gonna wait till he's out of the way. I don't want to be sitting here with the right signal running um, because that driver behind me will more potentially slow down or stop or flash to let me go. Or well, you've just interfered with somebody else's journey. So we don't do that. Anyway, I'm looking all around to go and somebody else has arrived. Now again, notice my signal is not on yet. I'm just looking around, I'm planning to go after the second car, there's two cars coming past, the second car's going on, the signal's going on, the handbrake's coming off, and away we go. I've not inconvenienced anybody, I've not confused anybody by sitting there with a signal running when I have no intentions of moving yet. Remember, keep the car at 30 down here. It's ever so easy to get carried away and think, I want to catch up with those cars in front. They seem to be moving faster. It's very, very easy to fall into that trap, especially on your driving test when you're already feeling uptight. Mirror check, we've got priority here. I'm just keeping an eye on the one coming towards me to make sure he does give me the priority, and they are. And we're turning left into Springfield Road. So around the bend, it's not unusual for an examiner to ask you to pull over in a safe place. Again, take your time, don't pull over immediately if you can't find a, uh, a safe place. I wouldn't be pulling over here, for example, which is opposite Chepstow Road. I might pull over uh, by the Grass Verge here or here, but I'm not gonna do that now because we've got temporary traffic lights anyway. And I'm just going to apply the handbrake into first gear, check both the door mirrors and then gently bring it through. We're following the road all the way to the end of the road and then we're going to be turning left onto the Stafford Road, the A449. So just taking your time. There's still things that can go wrong along here. So we've got the pub on the left where cars can emerge. Uh, people might have been practicing their maneuvers on there, so it, it isn't just people who've used the pub you've got to think about. Already committed with the traffic lights changing there on top of them, 
Uh, and what we're going to do now is be mindful not to go over 30 miles an hour again. We just went through a 30 zone. So many people get the car going up here and it is strictly 30 from this point for a while. We're going straight ahead at the roundabout and then taking the first road on the left. So this is just Stafford Road, busy roundabout here. This is Vine Island. We're going straight ahead at Vine Island and then taking the first left. So checking all my mirrors, covering the clutch and the brake if I need to. And I'm just looking over to the right for a gap that I can use. I'm gonna take that and then check the near side mirror signals on i'm looking out for anybody crossing the road here particularly lollipop ladies uh, this time of the day that would not be unusual to see and then we're just gently bringing the car forward we've got two warning signs mirror even if you can't read the warning signs i would still check the mirror we know they're warnings because they are triangular Remember a stupid little thing uh, that I like to say to my pupils is we try to warn people. Triangles are warnings. So try. Okay, mirror. Reduce the speed. Clutch can go down for a gentle brake. Tires and tarmac. Uh, handbrake on and checking back door mirrors while we're in station traffic bringing the car forward we're going to be turning right at the end of this road so we're on b lane at the moment uh, and at the end of the road we're turning right onto wood lane of course we've got to cross the dual carriageway this does have a central reservation where you may wait it's important to position the car properly here uh, so don't go over there towards the corner we're going to position the car on the left i'm going to point this out to you so we're going to bring the car forward um, if i was over there more on that corner i'd be potentially in the way of somebody on the main road that wants to turn behind me so i can bring the car forward now and we're just following the road ahead so they're testing you on your signs and lines all the time around here and unfortunately a lot of the road surfaces are very very bad we've got one behind that's far too close mirror positioning out nice and early. i'll be dealing with him um, and we're going to go all the way to the junction and then turn left i believe so we're still on wood lane uh, turning left of the traffic lights, mirrors, onto Elston Hall Lane. So it's uh, at the junction, left of the junction at the traffic lights. Signals going on, lights are just changing, gently brake, clutch down. Nice, gentle, early brake pressure, controlling the problem behind, the person behind is too close. Remember, you should not be any closer um, than, at than at least two seconds. You need a two second gap between you and the one in front if it's a dry day. So remember to give yourself the gap that you need should you need to stop the car suddenly. And because that's a van in front I can't see so well, I'm gonna drop even further back so that I can plan easier. I can see a little bit more if I drop further back. Remember that's like a little moving brick wall there and the further back I am, the more I'm gonna see. Here we are turning right, third exit. The Tom Tom would tends to say, follow the road ahead at the, at the roundabout. If it's actually a right turn, we've got the left, we've got a head and we've got a right. Better to use second gear for more control here check that near side mirror and put the signal on remember this is a dual carriageway so you should be positioning close on the left side unless of course there's parked cars up here always look ahead for those parked cars there usually are parked cars there we're turning left at the top so mirrors the signal's going on now and i'm looking for reasons to stop and i can't see any so around this tight left hander and then we're turning right onto sandy lane so into the protected right turn area and then make the turn mirror checks 
The examiners do like to do hill starts here, so if we pull over by the second lamppost and the litter bin, somewhere there, that's what the request will be. Um, so that'll do nicely. Handbrake on, neutral, signal off. Drive away when you're ready. Of course, just have a good look for reasons why we need to delay getting it going and don't signal until you are moving. So I am going to signal now and bring the car forward into second gear, but I recommend you stay in second gear up here because if you go into third gear, especially if you've got your driving instructor in the back of the car, the, the car is going to be a good 80 kilos heavier than you're normally used to and the car is really going to struggle to get up the hill, potentially. So we're going up here now in, and we're turning right into Lee Croft Avenue and then first road on the left. So check the mirrors, signals going on, slow the car down, very wide mouth on this junction. Just allow the overrun to take it round. I just like to cover the clutch and the brake. We're turning left into Neve Avenue, the first left turn. Taking our time, there's always parked cars in Neve Avenue. We've got the work, work van there. I'm checking my right door mirror because I'm going to allow plenty of room. We've also got the novice driver who's potentially on a driving test. We don't want to screw that up for them, so I'm just going to give them plenty of room. Gently into third gear. Check that near side mirror before we bring it back, and I'm looking as far up the road as I can for any movement coming towards me, anything that's going to give me a problem. Check the near side and bring it back again. At the end of the road, we're turning left, so mirror checks. Signals going on in a moment. I'm just slowing down. I'm going to put the signal on now. I delayed my signal a little bit so anyone behind me wouldn't think that I'm pulling up behind that car. And then I'm slowly going to bring the car out. Can't see very good. Now I'm happy with that. This is where things get a little bit more tricky at eight o'clock or so in the morning. The right signal's going on. We're taking one, two, three, exit number four. Exit number four. So here's number one. Here's number two. Here's number three. Here's number four. We've got meeting situations. We've got a one-way system here. We've got humps all over the place. We've got uh, priority given to traffic coming towards us. We have to take our time. You can still see there's quite a few parked cars, but if I was here just that little bit early, you'd see what a nightmare it is. We've got the school on the right. We've potentially got hundreds of kids and their mums trying to cross the road and everybody's just dumped their car, any old hair wool over the road to try and get the kids to school. Um, and you'll also have traffic coming towards you as well so there could be as many as four cars all all at the same time parked on the left parked on the right you going forwards one coming towards you and you've got to negotiate this really slow i'm actually going quite fast considering the situation but we don't have the school traffic like like we normally do um that's why I, I would personally advise avoid going for eight o'clock tests because you've got the commuter traffic, people are trying to get to work, people are trying to get the kids to school. It's a nightmare. Uh, nine o'clock is still fairly busy if people are running late for work. Uh, 10 o'clock is better, 11 o'clock is great. So yeah, I'd go for 11, 11 at Featherstone if I were you. Anyway, bring the car forward. I'm looking underneath this truck for any feet, anyone moving around. I can see the driver is sitting in the cab there. He's reversing mirror, holding the car back, clutch down for a control coast. I'm just going to hold my position here just for a moment. Back into first gear ready, handbrake on. I like to sit here with my hand on the handbrake so that I don't actually forget that I've got the handbrake on. That's easily done. You don't want to be driving away and then stall the car because you forgot to release the handbrake. So I do like to sit here with the hand on the handbrake. And as long as I'm not going to get hit from someone from behind, it all is okay. Anyway, he's trying to reverse onto there. 
checking my door mirrors. Bringing the car slowly forward. We're doing a sharp left at the roundabout. By the way, we're on Old Fallings Lane at the moment still. And we're doing a sharp left onto the Canuck Road, A460. Signals going on. Just looking for anybody that's going to shoot out from the right. Can't see any problems with that. So I'm bringing the car forward into third. Got to share the road now. Looks like there's parked cars and there's a large one coming through. So I'm just holding the car back. Even though this is our priority, guys, sometimes we're going to have to give up that priority. Uh, they had no intentions of stopping for us. Uh, and then coming around the orange one towards the traffic lights I can't see anybody at the traffic lights that may have pressed that button so I'm I don't need to worry about those lights changing because somebody would have had to press that button and then gently on the gas just keeping very mindful of the the, uh, the McDonald's there and the SO garage cars coming on and off that uh, those car parks we've got one coming forwards now off the gas station we are following the road towards Canuck now it's the third exit at the roundabout exit number three we're going to position on the left side of the road because our exit is at 12 o'clock and there are no other signs or road markings to indicate otherwise so looking to keep the car moving staying on the very edge really exaggerate this on the very edge of the road the signal can go on now so road users at other exits can continue with their journey with a certain amount of confidence and uh, again i'm just up to 30 again keep that speed under control especially on this decline here we can see that there's vehicles coming onto our side of the road mirror so they're either coming around parked cars or there could be temporary lights or something okay someone's broken down so we're just going to negotiate this a little bit more carefully just in case they don't stop like this one so just because you've got priority doesn't mean you're going to get it anyway bringing the car forwards we've got two triangular signs remember warnings mirror triangles are warnings try to warn you and we can see the van looking to emerge he's merging now what about that red one so i'm not getting it going that's it mirror for the sake of just being a little bit more defensive you can avoid having a crash yes it wouldn't be my fault uh, but i don't want the hassle of having to get my car repaired i don't want the hassle of having to go through insurance so keeping the car moving now I remember from this route the instruction is to follow all the signs into Canuck we've got to be very very careful that there has been a, a trap that's been set and you need to be aware of it uh, you're going to be following all the signs into Canuck but one of those signs will tell you that you need to position the car in lane 2 on the dual carriageway if you position late you run the risk of cars already positioning early and preventing you from getting across safely and if that happens um, you're going to fail your driving test because for legal reasons a novice driver is not allowed on the motorway unless they're with a driving instructor and a dual control car you might wonder what the problem is if the examiner is sitting next to you but the examiner his role is just to sit there as an observer so he should not in any way have to give you instruction on what to do if you inadvertently end up on the motorway so they will do everything possible to prevent that from happening including putting their arm across onto the wheel uh, and telling you to follow the road ahead even though you are positioned for a left only turn um, it's unfortunate but this is one of those rare occasions where being going the wrong way on a driving test will get you a serious fault to fail uh, under awareness and planning probably um, anyway here we go so we're slowing things down if that car in front if the white one is on a driving test it's highly likely they're following signs to Canuck so we shall see 
for ourselves what they end up doing. So just take it, take your time along here. It's a uh, mechanic road still. It's a 40 mile an hour speed restriction. Uh, no point really getting the car going too much because we've got to keep slowing down for more roundabouts. Um, so a mirror check, covering the brake and just taking our time. I recommend as soon as you come past this roundabout here, I recommend that you get into the right hand lane as soon as humanly possible. So I've got my wary eye on the the, the the heavy goods vehicle behind me. I'm putting my right signal on now, having checked that lane two is clear. You can see on the road markings, it, it says to position in lane two. It also says on this sign here, Canuck, and you've got your dotted line, and, and we are positioned on the right hand side of the road to do that. I've got a wary eye now on the car in lane one. I don't trust that car. He might decide to follow the road ahead, and I'm ready for that if that happens. Let's keep an eye on that one as well. I don't see him got a left signal on, I don't see that. We're gonna be bringing the car forward now. I've also can hear a motorbike. Yeah, there he is. And that, that is what we're protecting ourselves against. So I'm checking my mirror, signaling when it's safe to come across. Like that. Joining the traffic. So use your ears as well as your eyes when something doesn't feel right use your intuition anyway we're almost finished with this route we will be turning left shortly into the avenue which will take us more or less back to the test center um, let's hope the tom tom stays on just so we can polish this one off uh, crawling along in traffic of course just keep your eye on what's going on in lane two around you in case vehicles are trying to merge in nose is playing up again i'm dying to sneeze <laughs> so every time i bring the car forward i'm just checking these mirrors as we slowly crawl along somebody else I'm gonna have to let him in because he's decided to push his way in that's the problem with the uh, the big L on top of the car I don't know if it stands for loser but all vehicles tend to uh, push in or bully their way in um, and usually it's a little bit easier to let them do that rather than to get into a conflict with somebody um, so yeah we're turning left it's just by the post office here be careful not to get caught in the box junction refer to rule 174 of the highway code details everything you need to know about box junctions suffice to say don't sit in there if there is a problem so i'm looking into this road here i can't see anything that's going to hold me up so i can cross the paintwork and now I've got my eye on the white one coming towards me. If I just slow down just a smidge, he'll be out my way and then I can bring the car around again. Right door mirror. The idea is I don't cause anybody to have to slow down, swerve or swear. Um, and then we're just gonna take our time down, down the avenue here. Um, remember where there's road bumps, we shouldn't really be increasing our speed between road bumps. I've put these down for a reason three people would have been killed or seriously injured before they altered the road layout here and you can see how straight the road is we've got the school uh, and the road being so straight it's too tempting for some people to uh, speed along so they've had to alter the structure in the in an attempt to slow people down mirror 
and I'll just keep following the road down to the end. Got my eye on the guy there with the dog. In case the dog comes loose across the road, I don't want that. Check my mirrors, there's somebody waiting there in the van. Are they waiting to get around a problem? Is there temporary lights? No, I see a signal, so that's not a problem. So by slowing down and assessing and altering your position slightly, you can make life a lot easier. Don't go rushing into problems. Uh, give yourself enough thinking time to assess what's going on. We're in Brookhouse Lane now, so the avenue turns into Brookhouse Lane. And at the very end of the road, we're turning left onto East Road. We're almost finished. So mirrors, signals going on. This is a awkward little turn. You can see how they've lowered the curb here because people get it wrong. And into first gear, and away we go. Straighten up wheels, second gear. Don't go racing like a bat out of hell, even if you see the car in front do so. It's still 30 for a while. You can see the national speed limit sign coming up. So we're just gonna be very disciplined and wait until that changes. You can't go faster until you go through the gate. So mirrors, now we can get it going. Now you can demonstrate to the examiner you know what you're doing. And into fourth gear. Just bringing the car forward now, the last little stretch before we finish into fifth gear take it all the way up to 60 if you can it's a lovely day uh, no risk of ice on the road so don't worry about skidding uh, mirror checks I can see brake lights ahead so I'm off my gas pedal covering my brake I'm going to be turning right so because I'm going that much faster I put my signal on that a little bit earlier gently braking Clutch can go down for a controlled coast now and then I am going to worry about braking hard if I need to. I'm not going to stall. Into first gear, having a really good look here. Remember, you've got to be very, very sure on Cat and Kittens Lane that there is nobody coming. Turn immediately right into the test centre. And we're going to be finishing it off. I'm just going to let this person finish their manoeuvre before I move forwards. They could be on a driving test and I don't want to put them under more pressure than needs to be. And that is it. hope that was useful to you i'm probably going to have to change the battery on my camera now and i'll get right back to you with another test route in a few moments bye for now